Well, good evening everyone. I hope that you've had a good day and that you've been able to enjoy some time outside of uh, your homes in some way or other. Um, it's great to be able to worship God together this evening. Uh, again, the, the readings are in the description, so I hope you've been able to look at those and, and get them ready uh, on your tablets, your Bibles, your phones, whatever uh, you've got in front of you so we can read along together. And then when I make the mistake, as we know will, will happen, uh, then you can, you can see what my mistakes are, which is great fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder how how you're getting along at the moment and uh, how you're keeping your spirits lifted in these dark days uh, it's, it can be quite hard can't it uh, but actually the thing that we need to remember is that as we come to God and as we come to his word uh, this this book holds the words of eternal life uh, the bible is where our hearts can be lifted as we look to God. And it's great to be able to look to him together as we read his word and declare who he is. And so that being said, let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love, that we may be cleansed from all our sin and walk with you in newness of life, singing your praise of him who died for us and for our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be good, holy and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 61 Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will, call, I will call to you with a fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the requests of those who fear your name. You will add length of, day, of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and the truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name and day by day fulfill my vows. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 22, reading verses 1 to 5 and then 13 to 19. So I'm just going to unplug my phone.
Jeremiah 22, 1 to 5, and then 13 to 19. This is what the Lord says. Go down to the place, palace of the king of Judah and proclaim them this message there. Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, you who sit on David's throne, you, your officials and your people who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of his opp oppressor, the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to alien them. The fatherless or the widow do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you are careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this, uh, this palace riding in the chariots and in, on horses, accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, I will swear by myself that in this palace will, be, will become a ruin. Woe to him! who built his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his countrymen work for nothing, not paying them for their labour. He says, I will rebuild myself a great palace with spacious upper rooms. So he makes large windows in it, panels it with cedar, and decorates it in red. Does it make you a king to have more and more cedar? Does not your father have food and drink? He did what was right and just, so all went well with him. He defends the cause of, of the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to be known, to know me, declares the Lord? But your eyes and your heart are set only on this dishonest gain and shedding innocent blood and oppression and exhortation. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jerichoim, the son of Joshua, king of Judah. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my brother. Alas, my sister. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my master. Alas, my splendour. He will have the burial of a donkey, dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Testament reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 45 to the end. The plot to kill Jesus. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? they asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let it go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them, named Cyphus, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realise that it is better for you that one man dies for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he had prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, 
but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one, so that from that day on they plotted to take his life. Therefore Jesus no longer moved out of, about publicly among the Jews. Instead he withdrew to a region near the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for the ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus, and they stood in the temple. Are they temple area? They asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given order that if anyone found out where he, Jesus was, he should report it that they might arrest him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin, and no sin was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. By his wounds you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let's pray. I know, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked for his favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of life, we thank you for this day and for all that we've been able to do. We pray that your glory will have been made known by your servants as we seek your praise and to glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those who are uh, struggling at this time. We especially pray for uh, the six houses next door to Rose who were broken into last night. We pray that, Lord, as they go through their possessions, they may find very little has gone. We pray that nothing precious would have been taken, but only those things that can be replaced. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for John Porter as he moves into a care home. Pray for his family, especially his daughter, Debbie, who uh, feels guilt that their dad has had to move. Pray that, Lord... Uh, that John won't pass into your glory 
at this time, but that Debbie and the whole family will be able to see John once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for uh, Asher, a neighbour of Kerry's, as her, it seems her father has died in the last 24 hours. We pray that you'll comfort her and bless her. Pray for the whole family, that you'll help them to be comforted by your spirit and by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for uh, your work to happen in our country. And so today we especially pray for Jeff as he realises and thinks how he can minister in uh, such times as a chaplain. Help his contacts be kept strong and that, Lord, you will continue to work through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for us as a church that you'll help us to keep knowing how we can serve you best and how we can still be church together throughout this time. Help us to be in contact with one another and to seek your love and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful God, who by your death and resurrection, the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in pow the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. If anyone can help me with my phone and how to turn it on silent, it's a Philips kind of hands-free thing. Uh, send me a message. That'd be great. Um, and I'll speak to you again soon, I'm sure. God bless.